Is it a good idea to vlog when you're dead tired? <laughs> So I started my last video by getting on a plane and I ended my last video by getting on another plane. I am now in San Francisco and I was brought here by YouTube along with a few other people to give them feedback about all different kinds of aspects of the platform. I can't say too much more about it than that, but it's a really great initiative that they're um, initiating. So I wanted to let you know what's going on and I'm sorry I can't share a lot more than that. But really good things are in the works. I'm excited about it. And even if I can't directly tell you about the fruits of our labor, uh, you will feel it on this platform. You will see the hopefully really good changes that are coming down the road. I did come up with something that I wanted to share with you on the airplane. The airplane didn't really have anything to do with it except for the fact that I'm always traveling with this little guy and uh, it's a great little toy to play with when you're trapped in a metal box in the air and don't have internet access or friends. So I'll demonstrate this little music trick on the OP-1, but you really can do this with any music software or device that allows you to individually mute and unmute tracks. And it's just exploiting that basic function in a new way that, I don't know, after years and years of producing music, I've never actually quite approached it like this before. Let me show you. There are two synthesizer lines. One that was the foundation that I came up with first that was more of a bass line. <laughs> started as just a double of that line, but an octave up, but I ended up kind of harmonizing with the first line a little bit, so it's not the exact same melody all the way through. And then in playing with muting and unmuting these two tracks, I came up with this interesting way to create variations and new melodies, really. So these numbers, one to four, represent your four virtual tape deck tracks. Four is empty right now. One has the drums, two has the low synth line, and three has the high synth line. And each of these can act as a solo button for the track, meaning that when it's held down, only that track is heard. If you hold down multiple tracks, you can hear all the ones being held down. So if I let this play, holding down one gives you just the drums. And here's the cool trick I found. Uh, by using two and three individually while the drums are playing, I can jump between these two different synth lines and kind of create new lines and create new rhythms of the melodies that I've already got there by just essentially using tiny pieces of them at one time. Let me show you what I mean. was helpful to you in some way. I know as far as my videos go, it was a super specific kind of tip, but I thought it was interesting. It was creating a way to perform using material that you had already kind of committed to a recording. I have to go to bed now because tomorrow I'm getting on another plane back to LA. So many good things happening right now. I will be able to share more about what I'm doing. I'm sorry that I had to be a little bit secretive about this thing I'm doing at YouTube headquarters. I'm trying to keep up with making content while I'm traveling, so I feel like I have to fill you in a little bit about what's going on. Now it's time to pack up all this and then sleep, and then it's on to the next adventure. that I wanted to mention, if you're a musician, you can win an OP1 through a contest I'm doing that's sponsored by Musician this month. I'll put info in the description about that.